sticky, jammy. This is like the savory condiment of your dreams, my friends. We are making the ultimate exo sauce. Okay guys, this is the condiment that you need to have in your pantry at all times. <laughs> Fried rice, noodles, noodle soups, oh, eggs, anything, so good. Uh, we're gonna get right into it now with a couple of ingredients that you might need to do a bit of online searching for, but totally worth it. First of all, we wanna talk about some dried scallops. So that's these guys here. Now this is the ingredient that makes or gives the exo sauce its its name. So it's named after exo cognac, very expensive, very amazing and fabulous. And these scallops can be quite expensive. Look, I've got a little tip here. Don't go for the really big ones. Um, go for the smaller ones. We're gonna shred them up anyway. That's gonna make it a little better for you. Okay, so have a look in here. I've had these dried scallops soaking overnight in just a little splash of Chinese Shaoxing wine uh, and then the rest just covered with water. So this is how they rehydrate and what I want to do is just get them into my little processor here and then make sure you keep this soaking liquid because we put some of that lovely Shaoxing wine in there and it's also got lots of flavor from the scallops and we're going to use that a little bit later. Now what we wanna do here is shred up our scallop meat and because we've had it soaking, it's nice and soft. So just give that a good pulse in here. That is the kind of situation that we're looking for there. So now we wanna deal with our dried shrimp. So that's these guys here, and I've had these soaking again in that same mixture, just a splash of the Shaoxing wine and some water overnight. Look, if you have decided to make this on the same day that you would like to eat it, um, you could actually do this in some boiling water for a couple of hours instead of just the room temperature water overnight. Uh, but you wanna get these dried shrimp, now that they're, well, they're rehydrated dried shrimp, into your food processor. And what we're gonna make here is some nice shrimp fluff. Okay, so this is the kind of fluffy texture that I'm talking about here. Okay, so just a little warning here. If you didn't grow up in an Asian household like I did, you might be finding these ingredients a little bit whiffy at this point. Don't you worry, it is gonna all turn out in the end. Come with me, follow me on the journey. It will be fine, guys. Uh, but what we wanna do now is blend up some more aromatics. So some garlic and some red shallots or French shallots if you can't get the Asian red shallots. And then here we go with a little bit of heat. Just want some fresh red chilies. Now I'm using, these large red chilies are really, like really mild. They're almost like a capsicum flavor. You can literally, you know, just bite in. So wherever you are in your area, go for a chili that's quite mild. We're gonna add the heat a little bit later with some chili powder. So this one is mainly for color and a little bit of sort of flavor, but not so much, not too much heat with this one. And that goes in with our garlic and shallots. Oh, that chili flavor is so delicious, not hot at all, love it. Okay, uh, now I'm gonna get this, blend. I kind of want a fine chop here, I don't want like a puree, so just kind of pulse until you get a fine chop. Okay, so this is the kind of thing that you're after, a nice kind of fine chop there without it being too like pasty or anything. Because the thing is with our exo sauce, especially like a homemade one, I like it kind of a little chunky, I like it to be bitsy, kind of, you know, have lots of little shiny, sticky little bits and pieces in it. So that's why I don't want everything too, you know, fine dining. Um, okay, so we've got that going. Now what we're gonna do is get into our wok and start everything simmering away. So I want some oil, a fair, a decent amount of oil here. So the cool thing about making this exo sauce at home is that you can tailor it to how you like it. So I like mine a little on the oilier side because then you get heaps of like awesome flavored oil to drizzle all over noodles and, and whatever you like. But if you'd like less oil and a crispier finish, you could also use less oil. Anyway, we want the oil in a nice wide pan. That's important. I'm using a wok, but a wide frying pan would do as well. 
So the wide pan is going to allow a lot of the moisture to evaporate off quicker, which gives us that sticky kind of jammy situation that we want. Now turn the heat on and just wait for that oil to heat up. I don't want it really super hot. I just want a nice little bubble when I put my bacon in. Now you might be thinking, why are we putting bacon into a Chinese condiment? Well, traditionally in Hong Kong, they would use uh, a very expensive kind of Chinese ham, but we don't have that here. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna use good old bacon. Look, I've tried prosciutto, I've tried a few different things, but I like the kind of smoky chewiness of the bacon. So I'm gonna add that in. Oh, the smell of bacon, literally, is there anything better? Uh, now, what you want to do here is just kind of give this a stir. I want this bacon to kind of sizzle away for about three minutes or so till it starts to get a little crispy and we get some of that delicious bacon fat leaching out into our oil. Okay, so things are looking a little crispy in here. I love that smell that's happening right now. I'm going to go in with my scallop shreds. And now we're going to give these guys time to get their kind of flavors and crispiness going. I like to do this in stages. So instead of dumping everything at once, each ingredient gets its time to, you know, get all nice and delicious. Now make sure you keep monitoring that heat, guys. You don't want anything burning here. We just want a really nice sizzle happening in there. And that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to add in my dried prawn now. Dried prawn, dried shrimp. You know, <laughs> I even I get confused now because in Australia, obviously, we call everything a prawn, um, except for, funny enough, dried shrimp. We do call them dried shrimp. But anyway, if you're in the US, you're calling everything shrimp, right? Or are you? I don't know. Tell me in the comments. <laughs> okay, so give your dried shrimp, prawn, uh, whatever, a little bit of time as well. Okay, I'm already starting to smell the deliciousness here, guys. That kind of like... Uh, it's like a savory seafood kind of smell is really, and the bacony smell is really getting going now. It's good. All right, let's go in with some of this chili, garlic, shallot stuff going on here. And so it's like we've kind of started off with our like deep, intense, savory kind of base, and now we're going in with our beautiful, you know, fragrant garlic, the shallot, you know, it's lightening everything up, and then you've got that just slight mild heat from that chili and look at that color, mm, so good. Now again, I want you to be a little patient here. Your patience will be rewarded. Um, just, um, you know, four or five minutes here, a good four or five minutes because I don't want any of that raw shallot or garlic flavor at the end. I just want a really beautiful, deep, savory flavor. So just keep that going, stirring every so often for about five minutes. All right, so currently kitchen is smelling amazing. If you guys are at home making this with me right now, then you will know what I'm talking about. Uh, we've got a few more seasonings to add here though. I wanna add in some oyster sauce. And now we're into the soy sauce. So we need two different types for this one and I'll explain why. So we've got our light soy sauce here and light soy sauce is just your typical all day, regular, general purpose Chinese soy sauce. Uh, the light just refers to, I guess, being the opposite to the dark soy sauce. It doesn't refer to light sodium or light anything else but color. So we're using the light soy sauce for the saltiness. And then I've got my dark soy sauce here. This guy is a little sweeter actually. So you would think darker, more intense, but actually it's sweeter and less salty. This guy we're using for some like deep dark caramel color. And I do want a little bit more sweetness here. So we should end up with an exo sauce that is jammy, but not like jammy in texture, but not overly sweet. Uh, but I do just want a little bit more of a hint of sweetness. So I've got some brown sugar here. You could totally use white sugar as well. All right, so one more little ingredient that you might need to do a bit of online shopping for, but this one is gochugaru uh, or Korean chili pepper flakes. The reason why I like the Korean one for this is it has a really intense red color like you can see here. Uh, look, if you can't get a hold of this and you've just got regular chili powder, uh, totally fine. I just, I really like the bright red color of this one and I like the level of heat. It's not too hot. Now I want to add in some of that scallop soaking liquid that's going to give us like some extra moisture but also add that flavor I was talking about. Oh, and here's where the magic happens everyone. That is now transforming into our deep, luscious, dark, 
mysterious almost exosource. What we do need to do is exercise a little bit more patience and I want to let this simmer away until it gets that jammy texture I keep talking about. Make sure you come back and give it a stir every so often, show it some love. The next kind of 10-15 minutes or so, turn it down. Don't let it burn. That would be a tragedy. Oops, sorry, I've got one thing. <laughs> We do actually need to add some Chassing wine as well. I know I added some in the soaking liquid uh, yesterday when I was soaking my, my prawn, shrimp, prawns, shrimp <laughs> and um, scallops, but I want an extra splash here as well. So just a little bit, stir that, and now let it do its little simmering business. Alright guys, this is looking totally epic. Come in here and have a look. Now it is shiny, sticky, jammy, glossy, smelling epic. This is looking good. Okay, so there are lots of different ways that you can be using this sauce. Uh, you can just literally pop it into a bowl, put it at the table and it's just kind of an extra, you know, spicy, savoury kind of drizzle sauce. Or you can pop it into some jars. And then you want to store these guys in the fridge. Use it up as quickly as you can. I don't find that I ever have a problem with using up this stuff. It goes on everything. <laughs> but do try and use it up within a few months because it's going to have the best flavour then. And you'll see I've got lots of this lovely oil. So I like mine on the oilier side, like I said earlier. And that is because I can scoop up some of that oil and drizzle it on noodles or fried rice or all those sorts of things. But obviously you can change the texture to how you like it because you're making your own exo sauce at home. Alright, now I have to get in here and try this so I can tell you guys all about it. Let's have a look. Oh, look at that colour and how dark and kind of sticky that is. Oh, so good. Mm. Still a little bit hot. That flavour, it's like every kind of salty, savoury, flavour profile you can think of, bang, it's like this huge, huge extra flavour of extra flavour. Oh, love it, love it, love it. Guys, you need to be putting this on your fried rice, you need to be putting it on your noodles, on your eggs in the morning, mm. Mm. put it on toast, anything, so good. All right, I'm going to be having loads more recipes using my homemade exo sauce coming up. Don't miss out on my channel. Click the notification button and then you will hear all about any new exosource recipes. Alright guys, thanks. See you next time.